What's up you guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a wing on your 370Z. Uh, in the past, I already had a wing installed on my car, but as I told you guys, I am getting a new wing for my 370Z. Um, I apologize if it's a bit dark out tonight because I have, of course, decided to work on this during the nighttime after work. Um, normally, I would wait to the weekend to do these types of install videos for y'all, but I am too excited to get this going because FedEx did leave a note on my door earlier today showing me that my new wing has arrived. So we're going to run down to the FedEx office and pick that up, and you guys will get to see for the first time what it is that I am now putting on the 370. Let's go. apologize for the low light situation right now guys normally I would wait until the daytime to be able to do these types of videos for y'all but I am trying to save the weekend to get the camber arms installed and then be able to take it to an alignment shop to be able to get the alignment finally fixed on this car so I want to go ahead and just get the spoiler knocked out tonight I also need to try and figure out what's going on with the coilovers at the moment the back right corner is clunking a little bit it sounds like maybe the top of the spring is hitting the top of the frame so I need to go and figure out what's going on there I just kind of need to tighten everything up as I said I need to get the alignment done and then an update for you guys on what is going on with my vinyl I spoke with Vivid recently and it sounds like they are not going to finish the latest production of the Space Pearl vinyl until the middle of February and then I think they said that they're supposed to get the vinyl in towards the end of the month and then I should have it in my hands maybe the first week of March I don't know um, but I would really like to be able to get that as soon as possible because I do want to finish getting this car wrapped so that way it finally looks like it's all the same color but anyways I'm going to go ahead and shut the light off here and we are going to continue heading down to FedEx so we can get the spoiler <laughs> now managed to get the spoiler back just barely fits inside the car here had to basically squeeze it between the two headrests back there but we'll go ahead and get this taken out of the car and let's get it unboxed <laughs> Alright guys, and here is the new Honeycomb Carbon Fiber GT Wing to replace the regular Carbon Fiber one from Evo R as well. I got these from the same maker. Jay is the one who sells these on his website Evo R. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is, I believe, the first one that has been shipped to the US once again because I bought it basically as soon as he posted it on his website because I wanted to get it to be able to match the other parts that I've been doing on the car. But now that we got this unboxed, let's go ahead and get it on the car. So the first step when installing a spoiler like this is you typically want to get it assembled like I have over here, except I'm actually going to go ahead and take the mounts off of this one because I'm going to try and reuse those as well as the parts that connect to the car here. I'm going to try and reuse all of that hardware so that I can keep the new stuff kind of packaged up and ready to go so I can ship that to whoever buys that spoiler. But let's go ahead and get the new spoiler assembled and then what we're going to do is we're going to test fit it on top of the car. Alright so one problem I'm running into that I didn't have on the old spoiler is this piece here is a little bowed. Uh, this kind of carbon fiber piece that hugs the stand. It's bowed outwards so I can't really squeeze both of these ends together because I'm worried about putting too much pressure on here and then snapping this piece. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna have to do is probably buy some spacers to place inside here. That way I can give it some support whenever I'm tightening the bolt down. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten the bolt as much as I can without flexing this too much, just as a temporary fix until I can get some of the spacers because this back bolt right here is holding it on fairly stiff. So I'm not too worried about that. Go ahead and leave that for now, get the front bolt tightened down, and then later on we'll come back and we'll see if we can fix that up. Alright, now I've got the 
other pieces attached, including the stands here and the feet. It's important to get these as secure as possible when you're pre-assembling the spoiler. That way you know where these feet are gonna sit on top of the car. And the next thing you're gonna need to do is I'd probably recommend putting down some masking tape, several strips across the area where you plan on the stand sitting. Um, mine is the exact same spoiler as the one I previously had, so I suspect that the holes are gonna land in about the same place. In fact, I'm hoping that I can use the exact same mounting holes for this because that'll mean I won't have to do any additional drilling, but you'll wanna put several strips of masking tape on there because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the spoiler and we are going to test fit it on top of the hatch. We're gonna place it approximately where we want it. You'll want to fasten it temporarily like with some tape or something, or if you have a friend to help you, he can go ahead and hold the spoiler on here, but we'll put it in place. We wanna measure it to make sure that it's centered, unless you want it off center for some reason, in which case, do you but we wanna make sure that it's centered and in the right place before we start drilling holes. And then what we'll do is we'll take like a Sharpie or something and we will mark where the mounting holes on the feet sit so that way we know where on the hatch to drill. All right, and with the spoiler mounted fairly well so that way it's not going anywhere, you wanna go ahead and take your measuring tape here and you're gonna to wanna to measure a couple of points on both sides of the spoiler to make sure that it's even for instance, you can measure, say, from the corner of the taillight to the corner of your spoiler. You can also measure things like from the center of the glass to each of the mounts just to make sure that those are even. This is probably the most important step, you guys, because you want to make sure that your spoiler is lined up correctly. So take as many measurements as you can, make sure that you're happy with the fitment before you go ahead and mark the mounting locations on the hatch. So what I found measuring the distance between this top reflector piece here and the two mounts is that the spoiler is about half an inch too far over to one side. So we're gonna go ahead and move it about a quarter of an inch over and that should fix the problem. And even with everything measured out correctly, you still wanna take a step back and just take one more good look at it just to make sure that it looks even. Uh, I'm looking at it now and it looks like it is about perfectly centered, so I should be ready to go ahead and mark the holes that I'm gonna need to drill but it is important to just take a step back and see the whole picture to make sure that it does look straight to you because you don't want to start drilling those holes without it centered. But it looks good to me. We'll go ahead and mark the positions of the holes and then we're gonna to begin to drill. All right, now if you did this properly, you should have all of your pen marks sitting on top of the tape where it is that you need to drill. I have eight, of course, four for each side. And what I have noticed is if you can see there, it looks like the pen mark is sitting on like basically on the inside edge of the original holes that I drilled, like that. And it's also the same story on this side. It's on the inside over here because I'm guessing that the uh, mounts are slightly closer together. Um, but I'm not too worried about it because they're not even off by like an eighth of an inch. They're still sitting inside the same hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my original mounting locations because I don't want to have to personally drill additional holes if I don't have to. It's just going to be taking up more of the hood. So rather than run the risk of damaging anything else, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same mounting holes that I have. And what that'll mean is when I go to actually mount the spoiler, the stands will have to bow outward ever so slightly, but it's not even going to really affect the spoiler itself. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. But for those of you who do need to drill holes, this is the point of no return. You have to be very careful to make sure that you get your drill bit centered. And you wanna start with a small drill bit, maybe like a 64th of an inch, something really small. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna drill a pilot hole on top of where each of your pen marks are. A pilot hole is just a tiny hole that you're gonna to use to follow up with your large drill bit. You wanna drill a tiny hole into each of these positions here, making sure to go in perfectly perpendicular to the hood itself so that way your hole goes in straight. Once you've done that, you need to take your mounting bolt. I don't, uh, let me see if I can find one here. All right, so here's an example of one of the bolts that Evo R sent me. You wanna find a drill bit that is only just as wide as the outside of those threads there. You don't want to drill a hole that is too wide. Otherwise, you might have some wiggle room there uh, for the bolt to be able to move around. You just wanna get it large enough so that way it'll fit the bolt itself. So for this particular bolt, that Evo R has sent me. Uh, I can go and check real quick to see what drill bit this is gonna use. 
It is looking like a 7 16 drill bit is about what I'm gonna need for this bolt hole. Um, but it is gonna vary, of course, just depending on what size bolt it is that you end up getting with your spoiler. It is gonna vary, of course, per spoiler to spoiler. And I wouldn't even trust this size coming from Evo R each time because he may change up the mounting hardware. So with whatever drill bit it is that you need, you'll then wanna go back over your pilot holes that you drilled with the smaller drill bit and you'll want to widen those holes out with the correct size. Now, before you guys actually begin drilling, um, I kind of learned this the hard way. You want to probably put down a piece of, I don't know, carpet or whatever it is you guys have laying around, some sort of large rag to cover the entire trunk. And then also make sure you take out the plastic piece here. I remembered to do this. You take off this plastic uh, section here. Uh, might leave a link in the description below to a video showing you how to do that. But really all you need to do is pull on the sides of the plastic trimming to pull it out. And then absolutely make sure you put a blanket down because what's gonna happen when you start drilling is you're gonna get a bunch of metal shavings that are coming down. So you wanna make sure that you cover your carpet completely so that way you don't get metal shavings everywhere. In fact, I still have a bunch of metal shavings from when I first did this. But that is the first step that you're gonna need to do. So once you've got those holes drilled for your spoiler, it is then time for the scariest part of this entire install. Normally, you will have bits of metal that are going to be covering up these holes here, so you won't really be able to get to these with a socket wrench, so that way you can tighten it down. A couple of them might be visible, but others are gonna be hidden by this secondary piece of aluminum here that sits under the hatch. So what you need to do is you need to use this scary looking thing. This is called a hole saw. It basically attaches to your drill bit and has all of these ripper teeth on the end of it, and it has a little drill bit sticking out the top. And what you do is you set it up against the area that you want to drill into. And then as you begin to drill, it's going to pull the ripper teeth into your hatch. And it's just going to start throwing metal shards everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. I wish I had pictures to show you guys, but there's just going to be metal all over the place. And that is why you want to make sure you put some sort of blanket or, or something down to catch all those metal shards. But that's going to drill a nice one to one and a half inch hole through your hatch. So that way you can actually fit a socket wrench up in there. So you can use the location of my holes kind of as a reference, but really it's all gonna come down to you sort of eyeballing where on the top of the hatch it is. And then using some of these pre-existing holes to try and locate where exactly your drill holes are. So that way you can get a correct location. You might want to mark the outside edge of the plastic ring. This is actually sticking out a little too far so you can see this hole when the plastic cover is on. But it is important that you try and get them centered. I ended up having to drill, I think a total of four. I have two here, so that way I can access both of the holes. I've got one that I drilled here, and then one right here, which I had to move all this hosing and stuff out of the way to be able to get to that. The other mounting holes are kind of accessible through the locations that are already drilled into the hatch. But this is gonna be the most difficult and scary part. If you haven't used a hole saw before, don't be alarmed. You're gonna be getting lots of metal shards everywhere and it's gonna make a lot of noise. Uh, just make sure that you're wearing long sleeves. Make sure that you have everything around you covered so that way you're not getting metal shards over the paint or in the carpet. And as I said, you're gonna probably be finding metal shavings for quite some time because a lot of it's gonna end up flying into the hatch and then that stuff will just be slowly coming out over the years. But once you have drilled these areas in with the hole saw, you should be able to access your bolts now you should be able to see all of them be able to get a socket wrench up in there so the next thing you're going to want to do is take the mounts or the feet off of the spoiler if you can because what we're going to go ahead and do is place those on top of the hatch we'll put the mounting bolts through to hold it in place and then we'll start threading the nut on the bottom of it so that way we can get the feet mounted one thing i might recommend you do if I can find it here. So one thing I would recommend you do is get some weather stripping. I just bought this stuff at a local hardware store. You can look in the area where they've got like um, doors and that sort of thing. And it's important that you put some weather stripping around the bottom of your feet if you can. Um, you can kind of see the areas where I used to have it. It's important to do this because what you're doing when you drill a hole up here is you're allowing a place for water to get into the car and you really don't want all that water leaking in the car at all because it'll start ruining things, mold, build up, rust, all that stuff. 
So you want to try and waterproof this as much as possible. And that's actually why on the top of the holes here, you'll also see me use some rubber washers because I'm trying to prevent any water from getting in around the bolt head. And I've also used some rubber pieces in various other locations just to kind of prevent different parts of the spoiler from rubbing on the mounts. But it is important to try and waterproof this as much as possible. I'll kind of show you guys everything that I use again later. Um, I'm not gonna put the weather stripping on yet because I'm actually gonna be peeling these off in about a month to be able to repaint the, uh, or rather rewrap the top of the hatch once I get all the wrap in. So I'm gonna avoid putting that on now, but I would recommend you guys do that just to make sure that you're not allowing any water to get into your hatch. If you happen to have mounting tape, you might also be able to use that as well. And then when you start to go and tighten it down with your bolts, it's gonna compress the weather stripping a little bit so that way it will create a nice seal to prevent water from leaking through. And that is how you install a GT spoiler on your car. Now you can enjoy the extra rice that you've put into your vehicle by installing an overly large wing on the back. This is of course the same spoiler that I had installed on my car previously, just done in the honeycomb carbon fiber now. It looks absolutely amazing and matches everything else I have on the car, so I'm really happy with it. I do need to make some adjustments to it, namely I need to get the weather stripping put on once I've got the car wrapped, and I'm also gonna need to do some drilling to be able to make the adjustment holes line up correctly so that I can adjust the angle, because right now it is sitting at a fairly steep and aggressive angle of attack, and I think it looks kind of ridiculous for the road, so I am hoping to get this fixed pretty soon. But thank you guys for watching once again, and I will see y'all in the next video. Later.